As a kid, I sort of liked fossils and rocks and minerals and shells, so it all sort of came together. And the beauty of what I do in invertebrate paleontology is I study not only the marine environment, but the marine environment in the past, you know, in hundreds of millions of years ago. Fossil invertebrates are everything but vertebrates here at the museum, so the area that I'm in charge of involves lots and lots of phyla, you know, mollusks, but also there are kinoderms and brachiopods and corals and um, arthropods. So it's millions and millions and millions of species. So I do research on the systematics, the evolution of these forms, but also what they tell us about the history of our planet and the evolution of life on Earth. One of the most recent discoveries was uh, related to what's known as the Cretaceous Tertiary Boundary. At that time, about 65 million years ago, an asteroid collided with the planet and wreaked havoc. Um, and many marine creatures were affected by it, including the ammonites. Uh, these are fossil mollusks. Uh, what I've been doing is tracing the record of ammonites just up to this asteroid impact, and then um, the aftermath of it. And, and did they survive for uh, tens of years, hundreds of years, thousands of years? And the surprising discovery was in New Jersey to uh, have located a rock section that contained a record of the ammonites just before the asteroid impact, an indication of the asteroid impact itself, a thin layer in the rock, and then um, just above it, what the oceans were like in the immediate aftermath. One thing we've never managed to do with, uh, with ammonites, these fossil mollusks, is it's very hard to get at the, um, the soft body of the animal in terms of tentacles and eyes and brain and all of these things. You mostly have what you're dealing with is the shell because the shell is so easily fossilized. Lately, we've been using CAT scanning and um, CT imaging to look at some of these fossilized uh, ammonites. And we are beginning to see things uh, that we never saw before. And if you're a geologist, a paleontologist, you realize that there's a history to our planet that is hundreds of millions of years old. And most of the history of life on our planet then is in vertebrates. So, you know, vertebrates come onto the scene at a certain point, but, but largely, if you want to be a student of the history of life on our planet, then what you need to study are invertebrates. And if you're studying invertebrates, that most of this history is, is a fossil history, because you may have a number of species living today, but most of all the species that ever lived on our planet have lived in the past. So if you want the sense of the rich tapestry of life, you need to study the past and you need to study invertebrates.